five straight conference openers. And this SEC opener was at South Carolina, and there's that ranking history I just told you about. Now, Javon Sneed, that's the kid who left Texas because he couldn't beat out Colt McCoy. Third and 20, first quarter. Eric Norwood going to set the school record. That's his 27th sack career-wise, so he's your career sack man. Now we got a third and 10 in the first, and well, two South Carolina defenders had a chance at that, and now we got into third and two. We started at third and 20, now we're at third and two. Different possession, and well, Sneed just three for eight, 30 yards in the first half. Ole Miss special teams trying to live up to the special moniker. Marche Green fielding the punt. Up the middle, and there he goes. And there goes the punter, Spencer Lanning. Three field goals and a huge tackle, but Ole Miss, good field position. Later in the drive, field goal. Oh, fake! Derek Davis tripped up, falls short of the first down. Akeem Augusti, born in October, got him by his shoelaces in Houston Nut. Breakfast not agreeing with him. His club trailed 6-3 at the half. It's now 9-3, third quarter Sneed. Sacked by Cliff Matthews, fumbles. Fumble recovered by Matthews. Now, Sneed's the quarterback that Steve Spurrier voted first team preseason SEC ahead of team Tim Tebow. Now, Spurrier uh, later changed his vote. Ensuing South Carolina drive, third and goal. Steven Garcia rolls right. Patrick DeMarco, touchdown. Gamecock 16 to three. Sneed, two touchdowns down, but saying, hey, we're not out, we're just down. Ensuing Ole Miss drive, we got a fourth and five at the 39. Sneed, quick pass. Quick incompletion. Ole Miss turns it over on down. So we go fourth quarter, still 16-3. Sneed, this kid has thrown at least two touchdown passes in each of the last eight games that he's played in. There's one. Marquis Summers gets behind the secondary, and all of a sudden, Ole Miss behind by just six. Five minutes to go. South Carolina, third and 14. Garcia bagged by Greg Hardy. So it's fourth and forever. Gamecocks forced to punt. So Sneed, he's going to have a chance. Third and 12, under two minutes to go. Matthews gets him. Ole Miss just one for 13 on third downs. But what about on fourth down? Fourth and 19. Ball game or game ball for Sneed? It's ball game knocked away by Darian Stewart. South Carolina going to win it 16 to 10. Sneed, seven for 21, 107 yards. Not happy. Ole Miss loses its sixth uh, straight SEC opener to start a season. Fourth straight week of the season that saw a top five team tumble. South Carolina had been 1-31 and all time against top five foes. Last such win came in 1981. Nevada hosting Missouri. Oh, yeah, that's right. You took, the, you took the field. Tigers sucker. Favorite against the winless Wolf Pack. We've moved on. Second quarter, Tigers down one, third and seven. Gabbert avoids the rush. Denario Alexander. Reservations for six. Two-point conversion failed. Missouri missed a bunch of two-pointers. Uh, two years ago, this guy, Alexander, beat out Jeremy Macklin for first string on the Tigers. And then he got injured. Macklin's now with the Eagles. He's going to be, a, he was a big-time star at Missouri. Alexander looks like a big-time star. Antoine Thompson, he who hesitates is lost or loses. The number one team in the land, Tim Tebow and the Gators taking on Kentucky. Tebow came in with an upper respiratory illness. <laughs> Kentucky fans taking all proper precautions. That would still will not keep them, keeping Tim Tebow out of the end zone. Florida up 10-0. Mark, do you remember what happened last year when Kentucky tried to punt against Florida? They had a couple blocks. They did. Chris Rainey getting in on the act again. Blocks it, scores 17-0. 63 to five last year. At least Kentucky keeping it closer. Oh, look at Timmy Tebow. Put him in the spin cycle. Everybody should be so sick. He is sick like the kids mean. Tebow, Aaron Hernandez on his feet. 44 yards, Gators up 31-0. It's 31-7 in the third quarter. Tebow back to pass, and Taylor Wyndham, Lou, comes absolutely clean. Absolutely clean. You hit it and just put the devastating hit on Tim Tebow. Tebow took the first hit, but as you see Florida fans reacting in horror at their leader and most notable player in college football taking a hit like that. It appears to be the second lick, maybe, that did the most damage to Tim. He head hitting the knee of his offensive lineman, Marcus Gilbert. Atibo eventually came to. 
just helped off the field, but clearly very woozy. Talking with his parents there, the Florida staff, and then people who was sick coming in already, left on a car, taken to a hospital game. Cruises easily past Kentucky, Penn State, home against Iowa, and perhaps the Nittany Lions would have played for a national championship last year if they could have beaten Iowa. Darrell Clark had a miserable day then, but started with a bang. First play from scrimmage, Chaz Powell, 79 yards. Boy, it looks like it's going to be Penn State's day, a whiteout and a shutout. Well, Iowa said they were uh, participating in the whiteout because they wore their white jerseys and they came clean. On a special teams play, Adrian Claiborne, the block, the scoop, 53 yards, houses it. Hawkeyes up 11 to 10. And Mark, the Hawkeyes have had Penn State's number, and they have particularly had Daryl Clark's number. That one bounces off Evan Royster, Pat Anger of the pick. And this defense by Iowa has been outstanding the past couple of weeks, and particularly in this game when they had to come up with big plays, the Iowa Hawkeyes defense made those big plays. Clark was just 12 of 32 on the night, and how about the redshirt freshman Adam Robinson? He goes for 88 yards on the night, 13-yard touchdown. Hawkeyes up by eight. Later in the fourth, Royster. Loose and so's the football. Carl Klug with the recovery. Turnover by the Nittany Lions. Another mistake. And then Clark will be picked off by A.J. Eads. Tipped the pick. His third interception of the game. And Iowa does it to Penn State again. Charlie Weiss's career stops in Purdue, <laughs> West Lafayette, Jimmy Clausen, and his turf toe. And Clausen uh, really had trouble planning and delivering, and Charlie Weiss decides to go to the ground game. Also went to Dane Crisp, but he also went to Golden Tate in the Wildcat loop. Just very good block, and Notre Dame's offensive line played exceptionally well the first half of this football game. Here is Dane Crist, highly regarded out of Southern California in his own right. Fourth and ten, Notre Dame going for it at the Purdue 34, and Crist goes down. They turn it over on downs. Joey Elliott to Keith Smith, who had a huge game. Boiler up within three. Later in the quarter, Elliott, Jason Taylor. And a terrific job of faking to the right, coming back to the left, and a wide open Jason Taylor, and there's no defender around him. It's a busted play by the Notre Dame defense. Purdue takes the lead, 21-17, and no Clawson had pain in his toe. He comes back. Gutsy performance and delivers on third and 14. Robbie Paris gets 15. Second and goal. 42 seconds to go. No timeouts for the Irish. They run the football. A gamble, and Purdue stuffs them. Notre Dame can't stop the clock. So Purdue does it for them. Oh. No. Oh. So Notre Dame regains his composure. Jimmy Clausen, Kyle Rudolph, touchdown. Notre Dame escapes 24-21, previously sturdy, going into Autzen Stadium. Bears have won four of their last five against Oregon. We put a name on old Ed Dixon because Ed Dixon had himself a huge day. Jeremiah Masoli, that is Oregon's first touchdown pass of the year. They went for two. Ed Dixon. When we put his name there, you know he's going to do something good, eh, Lou? Oh, I tell you what, they must not have known he was eligible because nobody covered him all day. I want you to check out the defender on him here, Mayday, Michael Kendrick's bit. Oh, oh, he may be blocking me. No, he's not. He's got to go right on by me and catch the ball and take it in for a score. Cal, number six in the land. Number six, down 32 to three. The team who couldn't get a first down in the whole first half against Boise State. Here's Masoli again, jailbreak me. Dixon, 11 catches, 148 yards and three touchdowns, and Oregon absolutely obliterated. Well, at Offsprings, the kids aren't all right for his song of the day on some of his social networks, but the kids were okay against Washington State after losing to the Huskies last week. Matt Barkley back in there. He finds the freshman Bryce Butler for a touchdown. Then Barkley would find Damian Williams. You know, that shoulder looks pretty good right now. Throwing the ball deep. <laughs> Well, a lot of people's shoulders look good against the Cougs defense, it appears. <laughs> USC clobbers. Washington State bounces back nicely after the loss to the Huskies. On the subject of the Huskies, they were rolling in to take on Stanford, a game which featured a top 20 rusher, a top 25 passer, number one kickoff return man in the country, and all of them play for Stanford, including Chris Owusu. This is the opening kickoff loop. Uh, with no three safeties, and that drives me crazy, but... And 
I would just say just your crazy. safety. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I lost my mind. How about the redshirt freshman Andrew Luck? That might have been a redshirt freshman play. Backward pass. Stanford thinks it's an incomplete pass. It's not. Justin Glenn, scoop, score. Sark's team has it tied at seven. But Toby Gerhardt, boy, boy, is Harbaugh glad he didn't go play baseball full time. He's definitely outstanding on this play. Big, physical, great vision, and you can't take him down with an arm tackle. He's got the speed to take it the distance. Gerhardt was 20th in the nation, coming in averaging 105 yards per game. He almost doubled that. He had two bills on the night. There goes Luck, naked bootleg, Stanford. Smash Washington on the farm, 34 to 14. Only that rally loss against a Wake Forest, each Harbaugh's team, from being perfect in the ACC. Miami and Virginia Tech. Hokies defense had their back against the wall. Everybody talking how great Miami was. The U's back. Instead, Tyrod Taylor to Jared Boykin. Uh, just uh, caught him in man coverage, beat him on a post route. No pressure on Taylor, makes a good throw. All right, take another look at this mayday now on the ESPN Access, what Taylor sees and how Boykin gets free. A terrific job of rolling out by Tyrod Taylor. To look at the defenders, they're all flat-footed. He's going to look down the field and make sure that you keep an eye on Jarrett Boykin because he's going to put a move on the safety here and the safety's going to struggle and trip and it's over. From that point on right there, it is nothing but six points for Virginia Tech. Javez Grant got completely turned around and then a driving rainstorm fell and then hokey, hokey, hokey high. That is Beamer ball. Since 1999, nobody scored more non-offensive touchdowns than the Hokies. That one by Matt Reedy, number 74, because of good defense. USF, University of South Florida taking on Florida State. Redshirt freshman B.J. Daniels, a Tallahassee native, basketball player too. To a wide open Theo Wilson. Uh, what a great job this was by B.J. Daniels. But I got to say this, Florida State acted like some of the receivers had swine flu and they didn't want to catch it. There was nobody near some of them. Well, they did a good job because they weren't close enough to catch anything. They weren't close enough to catch Sterling Griffin. 73 yards. Daniels, 8 of 21, only 8 completions, but for 215 yards. Wow. The couple of scores, it was 14-0. Knowles trying to make a comeback. Christian Ponder sacked. FSU would miss a field goal later in the drive. Now Ponder to Rod Owens, and the Knowles did this all day. They lost four fumbles on the day. They were also stopped on fourth and goal. They missed the field goal that I mentioned, and oh, Ponder took it right in the mustache. And South Florida, uh, Jim Levitt said that this win changed history. I think what he means is it changes the perception of the future, but I get what he means. 17-7. <laughs> It's not going to change anything about history, Jim. It just changes the way they view you from it's now on. Major. Hey, look, Indiana and Michigan. Four guys get blocks on the line, and Carlos Brown has a little room. Look at all the blocks downfield, Mark. Head on the hat. That's what you have to have. Perfect execution by the offense, and that's why Michigan rolls in for the score. Brown is second touchdown of the day. Now it's 26-21 Indiana. They were trying to win in the big house for the first time since the pre bo Schimbeckler era. Tate Forcier up and over. Forcia B there. Here goes Forcia again. Another name knows he can run, and now Indiana does too. Michigan, 29-26, but how do you answer that, Lou? Well, Let's yeah. play 85-yard drive. Well, you run a play away from a blitz. They blitzed to the wide side of the field, had fewer defenders there, not enough speed, poor angle. Consequently, an 85-yard run for Ben Chapel. Uh, Darius Willis. Chapel gave it to him, and Willis finished it off. But Forcier, who was banged up in this game and had some freshman moments, showed his moxie. Scrambling, lands a little awkwardly. Oh, Tate had to come out of the game, but Denard Robinson have it for a few plays with an aching shoulder. But five plays later, the freshman from Southern California is back in the game to lead the Wolverines. His first play back in is a third down play. Martavius Odom. Oh, what a beautiful job of pass protection and protecting your quarterback and a great touch by Tate Forsey. Uh, Tate's holding that shoulder. Oh, don't congratulate me on that shoulder. Now here at a 36-33 game, under two and a half to go. Chapel looking for DeMarlo Belcher. Donovan Warren gets the interception. Now, Bill Lynch is crazy going nuts. He understood why. It looked like simultaneous possession. Unfortunately for Bill, that's not something they can overturn in replay. Interception stands is called on the field, and Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide taking on Arkansas. Alabama has two stars at linebacker. You know Rolando McClain, Dante Hightower, also a star. Hurts his knee on this play. Saban said after the game, the initial prognosis, 
didn't look good. Hightower did not return to the game, returned to the sideline in street clothes. Many believe Trent Richardson, the best high school running back in America last year, and he's pretty good as a freshman. He does not see any job here. He breaks five tackles and takes this ball all the way down for the score, shows his speed, but he's got the power at the point of attack also. Alabama using a little wildcat these days, and Greg McElroy lined up at wide receiver, then showed he's the quarterback. Julio's always a wide receiver. Well, this is first touchdown this year for Julio. He is one of the great receivers, had an outstanding freshman year last year. It's 14-7 McElroy. Guys, I've been telling you that Greg McElroy has the best passing arm for a quarterback in the SEC. <laughs> I mean, yeah. right there. He just shows it right there to Mark Eastman. <laughs> McElroy was 17-24 for 291 and three touches. Brian Mallett, previously number one in pass efficiency, was just 12 of 35. Alabama 35-7, the half. Taking LSU, let's go. My strong football team. <laughs> Take him in against Mississippi State. You know, you should never field a bouncing punt inside your own 10, Lou. Never field a bouncing punt anywhere, let alone a punt inside the 10 yard line. Oh, that's great, that's great. Look at how he sets up his block and look at the effort downfield. But Patrick Peterson's bringing Chad Jones with him. Peterson has scored a touchdown himself earlier in the game on a pick six. 93 yards, Chad. Puts LSU up 30 to 21. It's 30 to 24. Anthony Dixon scored a couple of touchdowns on the day, crashing deep into LSU territory. These in the waning moments of the game. Under 90 seconds. First and goal. Dixon is stopped. Second and goal. Giving it to him again, Mayday. Absolutely. Power and He gets it right to the edge of the goal line. Now it didn't work. Third and goal. What are you going to try? Play action pass? Play action pass, but you got to get it up high. Get it up high. He's open. Tyson Lee threw it. He said it was supposed to be a jump pass. Guess who was there? Chad Jones. I think Chad is vying for a helmet sticker. And then on fourth down, Lee tried to keep it. Chad Jones was in the middle of that, too. And LSU stops him on the doorstep. They beat Arizona State out in the desert last year, and this time at home. Joe Cox to A.J. Green. Boy, A.J. Green, tremendous night. Oh, he had a great night. Once again, had his outstanding freshman year last year. Just did so many things to help Georgia win. Over 150 yards receiving, and that is probably his biggest play. He blocked a field goal that would have given Arizona State the lead. And now in the ensuing dog drive, Joe Cox. Who's he looking for, Mark? A.J. Green. Green means go. Dogs in field goal range, and with two seconds left, they show you the Blair Walsh project. Just inside the left upright, hunker down, you hairy dogs. Georgia wins it 20 to 17 against Arizona State. Fresno State getting thumped by Boise State, taking on Cincinnati. Third quarter, Pat Hill had the running game going with Lanier Miller. Fresno State held the ball for 14 minutes in the third quarter, ran it 17 times, seven pass. They have the nation's leading rusher in Ryan Matthews, so why not? And this is a playboy Ryan Colburn would like to have back. On the since he's six down 21-17, he's picked off by Craig Carey. And then Tony Pike looks for DJ Woods, Mark. Oh, what a terrific one-handed grab by DJ Woods. Look at the concentration. Outstanding. Up there, tip it around, bring it in, reception. Worthy of making plays of the day, perhaps. And then Pike, who, Lou, I know you're very high on, finds Marty Gilliard. Oh, I, I'm really high on him. Look at uh, just the flick of the wrist and a perfect throw there. Here's a young man who was 15 for two years and persevered. 28-20, the final. Gilliard, nine catches, 177 yards, couple of touchdowns. Illinois and Ohio State. Three game festivities. Juice Williams. And Juice, he's been known to do this. Led the Big Ten in interceptions last year. Picked off by Brian Roll. Roll rolling back the other way. As the defense of the Buckeyes completely shut down Illinois. You know, they play for the Illibuck Trophy, which is a replica, a wooden replica of a turtle once found dead in a bathtub, which is not to be confused with Illinois season, which might have been found dead in a horseshoe <laughs> after this game. Brutal. Prior to Dan Harris, hey, look. That's it true? Uh, come on. 30 zip. Zook said, I know you've given up on us. I would, too, if I were in your shoes. But he said it, meaning that he hadn't given up, of course. Southern Mississippi and Kansas. Todd Reesing, this freshman, Tobin Oferum, has been sensational for Mangino's team, giving him a 
Helping with Jake Sharp, who's been nicked up a little bit. KU up. Now they're up 28-21. Austin Davis, Jonathan Massey. Our, our Southern Miss really put up a tremendous effort here, but I tell you, Todd Reading is such an efficient quarterback. And it works pretty well with the former quarterback, Terry Meyer, too. Reesing over three bills. Being Texas Tech, Houston had already beaten a Big 12 opponent, winning in Stillwater against Oklahoma State. Case Keenum rifling it into James Cleveland. Houston up 7-0. 21-20 now. Taylor Poston for Maine Swindle. Oh, just an effort here. Not particularly good tackling, but a nice run. Cougars down 28-23, fourth and three at midfield. Lou, you remember when we saw Patrick Edwards against Marshall last year suffer yes. that broken leg? Oh, yes. How great is it to see him playing oh. again and making a huge catch on fourth down converse. 53 seconds to go. Case is going to run it, Mark. What a great call. The quarterback draw in this situation. Case Keenum takes it into the score. Biggest win for the Cougars in years, I think, just because of the anticipation. The Oklahoma State thing was an upset. Houston gets it done by one. Another potential BCS buster. Boise State on the road at Bowling Green. Jeremy Avery tosses to Titus Young. One man to beat. Reverse. Reverse. See, we were as late as Bowling Green calling it. Broncos led 22 to nothing. Here goes Avery again. Avery dancing and everybody home. 71 yards. The Broncos win it 49 to 14, another productive night for Kellen Moore, 17 of 21, 247. TCU and Clemson. Now, Clemson eager to run down the hill, and TCU always eager to play against teams from those automatic qualifying conferences. Boy, this is a tricky play that Gary Patterson drew up, Lou. Well, it's just deflected <laughs> by a couple of Clemson players, and all of a sudden, Ed Wesley catches it and takes it 58 yards. Horn Frogs would score a couple of plays later. Kyle Parker in a 7-3 game. C.J. Spiller. One of the fastest men in the ACC, but he gets tracked down at the five-yard line. C.J., what's the deal? Uh, you know, Spiller joined Reggie Bush. The only guys with 2,500 yards rushing, 1,000 receiving, 1,500 kickoff returns, 500 punt returns. Clemson was up 10-7, but Dalton finds Antoine Hicks, and the Frogs go back on top in the fourth quarter on a spectacular grab by Hicks. ECU, the four-point lead. Now Clemson trying to answer and get closer, and Richard Jackson can't cut it to one. Late in the fourth, that means Clemson needs touchdown, not field goal. Fourth and 13. Twice, TCU stopped Clemson drives inside the 20, and the fighting Dabos gave them a fight, but not enough to stop TCU from winning for the 13th time in 16 games. In Wake Forest in Boston College, Riley Skinner and the Demon Deeks down 14, under four minutes to go. Skinner. Chris Givens, all of a sudden it's a seven point game with 11 ticks to go. Skinner, the senior, has one more chance. Plenty of time. Firing, Marshall Williams, touchdown, we go to overtime. BC kicked a field goal on their possession. Looked as if Wake was going to score, but there was a wild card in the deck, and it was Isaac Johnson causing the fumble really when the back went the wrong way on Skinner. BC recovers, and they escape 27 to 20.